Hello everybody. In the previous video, we have built an ESP-based Entrip caster to send RTK correction data to an Entrip server like RTK to go. In this video, I will show how to connect an ESP32 to the Entrip server and then send correction data to a UM980 or 982 module to build an RTK corrected rover. And I will be using the same setup than in the previous video, where I demonstrated how to connect the satellite module to the ESP and have shown those little LED network here, and also have shown how to install the necessary ESP32 XP firmware onto the ESP. So if you haven't seen this video, now may be a good time to watch this one first. In any case, in the last video, we had the yellow LED flash whenever we send correction data out to the entry caster. In this video, we will hopefully see that the blue LED will start flashing whenever we receive correction data. And of course, we also should see that the RTK lock indicator LED will turn on if we have successfully achieved RTK. Okay, so let's get started configuring our satellite module as a rover. And as always, the first command you should send is a factory reset, followed by choosing the correct signal group. And again, if your module is the UM982 dual antenna module, you need to provide two signal groups. However, for the 980 module, the single antenna module, which I'm using here, the best signal group is the signal group two, which will cause the module to restart. And once your module has restarted, we then can set our module into rover mode. And there are a couple of different options. You probably should read the command document. For example, there's the UAV rover, which you probably should choose if your platform is moving. But for a non-moving platform, I like to use the rover survey, which supposedly gives you the highest precision. So let's use that one here. Then I also like to change the timeout to 60 seconds from the 600 seconds, which are the default. That means simply that after not receiving RTK data for 60 seconds, the indicator will turn off and no, no longer will the module perform RTK corrections. And then you also can configure the reliability of your RTK correction with the reliability command here. Uh, three is the default, but later on, if we are going to a base station, which is farther away than what is sensible, we have to reduce the reliability here to get an RTK solution. And with that, we then can start sending our satellite position every second and also information about the satellite constellation with the GSV command. Again, this one here simply means that this command will be sent every second. And then you should see your satellite constellation and you can click through the various satellite constellations your antenna is seeing. And then of course, we also can start opening our trajectory monitor here and if you zoom in here, we should see that there is quite some drift because of right now, we don't have a RTK enabled just yet. All right, so once we have our GNSS module configured, we have to enable the Entrip client. Again, in the previous video, I have shown how to flash the software onto the ESP. So if you want to follow along, maybe you should go to the previous video before continuing. In any case, in the previous video, we had configured our Entrip server where we had to provide the URL to RTK to go the port number, and we had to specify the base station name we, we set an account up for, and you had to give your username, and then you also had to provide the password which was assigned to you when you set up an account with RTK to go. So again, RTK to go is a free uh, Entrip caster which you can simply set up. But for this video, we want to set up a client and you have to provide the same URL and port number. You have to provide the name of the base station you want to receive data from. And at this time, you actually have to provide the email you used to set up your account. And the password here is none. And as you can see, I already have entered all this information. And this actually will stay from session to session. So you can simply by activating and deactivating the right window here change between caster server and client quite conveniently. All right, so let's only have the client activated here. Actually, the ESP, while pretty powerful, is not powerful enough to handle all those different modules simultaneously. So you kind of want to restrict yourself to only having the ones activated which you're actually using. And then you simply click Submit and Reload. And then if everything went well, you should see that you now here receive correction data. And similarly, you will see that your blue LED here now 
has started to blink, indicating that indeed you're sending correction data to your satellite module. And as well, hopefully soon, the little RTK indicator light here will turn on, indicating that we now have a good RTK log. And then if you go back to our UPrecise software, we should see now, if we zoom out, that we now have a corrected position right here. So we can center on this one here and start zooming in. And you then can see that now we're having our one centimeter precise RTK corrected satellite position here. We also actually can take a look at the data stream here. So let me just pause this data stream and look for a GGA command where you can see this response here. And I have taken the liberty to write this out here and color code it a little bit. So we get our response here, where we first get the precise time when the signal was received. We get the latitude and longitude here, and we get the number of satellites, we get the horizontal delusion, which gives you a indication of how good your signal is. You also get the altitude, but most relevant for RTK here is the number four, which indicate that we have good RTK log and you can read over those other numbers, what, what they indicate. And also back here, we have the actual time when we last have received an RTK correction signal. So right now this is sent every second and that should stay at, at one second. But then as soon as you disconnect your correction signal, this number will tick up. And uh, since we have set the time out to 60 seconds, after 60 seconds, the RTK indicator LED will turn off. All right, so with that, let me just show you how the correction looks if you connect to different stations, which are available to everybody on RTK to go. A link to this map here will be in the description. It shows in real time base stations which are available on RTK to go. So right here, this is the one I set up. And if I hook up to it, you can see that immediately we get very good correction compared to no RTK. And if you zoom in here, you see this one centimeter precise location. There's another station on RTK to go, which is around 35 miles away, which is about the maximum you can expect a reasonable correction if you have a multiband setup. And you can see that uh, while the correction is not as good as it was for the station, which is uh, right next to me here, still within 10 centimeters or so, you get pretty good correction. There's another network actually, and that's indicated here by the little blue needles. This is a network which is run by the university of Southern Mississippi for the state of Mississippi. And there will be again a link in the description where you can request access to. And the closest station in, in this network is around seven miles away. And you can see the correction here is pretty good around five centimeters. And then the, the last station, which is around 150 miles away, that's again a station available on RTK to go. And you can see that the correction really doesn't do anything in terms of precision. However, if you watch this live, actually the drift seems to be much slower than the drift without correction. So there still might be some benefit to be had. In any case, uh, this RTK to go website, while pretty good, still has quite a few holes in it. So let me just show you that. So here is the, the map. And if we zoom in here, you can see all the stations which are available in the United States. Also, if you go over here to Europe, that the network seems to be a little bit more dense. But I think it would be kind of fun to see all those gaps here filled in. So if you are setting up an entry cluster using the instructions of this video, why don't you send me a comment and uh, I will start a little bit of a collection of all the RTK stations which are set up uh, as a result of following this video series. So that is what I had for today. If this was useful to you, please give it a like and maybe even subscribe. And until next time, goodbye.